What's up, everybody? Welcome to the PMC Quick Start Webinar. You made it. You made it. Welcome. This is week 17. We are so excited. We've been doing this 17 weeks in a row. What do we do here? What is this all about? Um, this is every Thursday at 1 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time. We meet for an hour, and all we do is just practice private money lending fundamentals, private money lending best practices, and we just stay sharp. We just stay sharp. And then it's up to you if you want to take action and network and do inside the chat box, you guys, um, you're more than welcome to do that as well. And I'm going to share with you some opportunities and, and things of that nature of how to leverage the private money club to help you meet your lending or borrowing goals. So every single time that I teach one of these classes, I am a, a huge advocate. You guys know this of disclaimers and disclosures. I make this sound probably harder than it is. And I, I just, I truly believe that if you're out there looking to borrow funds, you need to talk about how risky this business is, right? And, and one of the reasons why I got into teaching private money lending is I actually had friends that lost money or came close to losing money as private money lenders. And they came to me and said, Noah, help, I funded this deal. It's been uh, 18 months and it was only supposed to be 12 months and I haven't heard from the person. And it's like, oh my gosh, why didn't you come to me? What's going on? Did you get this document, this document, this document? And they said, no. Well, did you ask them this question, this question, this question? And they said, no. And I'm like, what did you do? Like, wh what happened? You know, did you not think to do these things? Like, I didn't know what I didn't know. I just saw that they were paying a good interest rate and you know, I, I heard that this could be good. And you guys, um, that, that, that really affected me. And I, 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 set out, I set out to educate as many people as I possibly could. And when Stephen Nagy and Chris Noggle, the founders of Private Money Club, asked me to, to do this webinar, I said, yeah, absolutely. Because if I can teach one thing or two things or three things that helps people be better borrowers and, and make better decisions and, and be better lenders, then yeah, why wouldn't, I, why wouldn't we do that, right? That sounds fun to me. Let's do this, right? So this is risky. Uh, I am a real estate investor, first and foremost. So everything that I'm sharing with you, I'm sharing from the perspective of a real estate investor and my experiences, right? And what I've learned over the last uh, uh, 12 years of, of using private money to fund our deals, okay? So I'm not coming to you from the perspective of an attorney, a real estate agent, uh, a licensed contractor, or any of these things. However, in today's class, uh, we are going to revisit one of the most important aspects of borrowing and lending money, which is surrounding yourself with a team of business professionals. All right, so, so I'm really excited. So how we do this quick start webinar, the first 20, 30 minutes or so, we go through some fundamentals, right? I'm going to share with you the, the same four or five slides I share every time. Why do I do that? Because we get great at understanding what those are, how to communicate it, and we're, we're going to, we're going to, build upon these fundamentals and they're just going to be a part of us, right? Just like we blink without thinking, we're going to be able to name the documents that we use to protect our lenders without thinking. That's the goal here. All right. That's the goal. So uh, this is week 17, week 17 of the quick start webinar, right? So I am so excited. So, so in, in honor of week 17 and, <laughs> And this is what we talked about last week, right? So we're building upon this. If you want to go back, there's, they're on YouTube. You can go and check out what we talked about last week at the Private Money Lending Guide, things of this nature. But this is week 17, right? I was very tempted, very tempted to spend the second half of this webinar talking about my favorite number 17, which is Josh Allen. Should we go 30 minutes about talking about how Josh Allen's the best quarterback in the NFL and how this is the Bills year? What do you guys think? Should we do this to celebrate week 17? Leanne says no. Okay, what I've done there, Derek says no. JD says absolutely not. So what I've done there, I've just taught you a lesson. This is a lesson. Everything that I do is a lesson. When it comes to building rapport, and, and if you're out there having conversations and wanting to talk to people and, and build conversations, when it comes to building rapport, we can't we can't get specific in things like this, right? So what, and I see this lots of times when people are building out their private money club profiles, they have these, and I, and I see this in like real estate agents, mortgage brokers and things like that. If you go to click on their profile on the website, it's like, here's a little bit about me. And they're so descriptive and so detailed with who they are. Like um, there's, there's one, I'll, I'll just give you some examples. Let's say you click on a real estate agent and uh, their profile says, hey, 
my name is such and such. I love sailing on the weekends, spending time with my two Labradoodles. And, um, you know, I, I went to uh, Harvard. I'm a huge Buffalo Bills fan, da, 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 da. What that person's done is just kind of, in my mind, I'm like, all right, I'm not really into sailing. I'm a cat person, not necessarily a dog person. I hate the Buffalo Bills. I'm from New England. And um, you know what? I don't know if this is the person for me, right? So when, we, when it comes to establishing rapport and establishing credibility, we got to keep it big picture, all right? So when fall season comes around, I'm going limit, to limit my Buffalo Bill talk to just celebrating Sundays with the family. That way we can build rapport with as many people as possible. All right. All right. Enough of that. Enough of that. Um, opportunities. So this is what I was talking about, Alexis. So if you would email me, if you have a deal that you would like uh, to showcase in Money Club Mondays with the Private Money Club, absolutely email me and I will get you in touch with Steve and Nagy and we can absolutely do that. Guys, this is this is an amazing opportunity. If you're a premier member of Private Money Club, by the way, real quick, let's just do a roll call. If you are in Private Money Club, type it in the chat box. Just let me know because there's a lot of people on here. I see the names that I don't recognize some people, so they might be new. If you're in Private Money Club, just say me, 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 or I am or something like that. All right, Jen, what's up, Jen Patel? All right, cool. PMC all day. Okay, cool. So if you are in Private Money Club as a premier member, share your deals because I would I don't know about you guys, but I would much rather have one do do one conversation one time to and have 500 people see it as opposed to having 500 one on one conversations. So how do we leverage the private money club platform you get in front of people you, you overcome your fear of, 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 of hopping on a webinar if, if that's if, the, if you got the jitters share your opportunities share your deals because then once the live editions over it goes on YouTube. Right, and then the members can go in and they can rewatch the videos. They send out an email to the thousands of people in there and, and say, "Hey, check out this Money Club Monday deal," and it's super cool, right? So take advantage of this. If this is you, let me know. I'm looking for case studies. So if you've done a deal and you want to share how the deal went from a private money lending perspective, let me know. Email me. I'd love to have you on. What we'll talk about is how you presented your deal. We'll talk about how the deal went, how much, and this is the most important thing. We'll talk about how much money your private money lender made. And we will celebrate your lender. Now, if you're the lender, you could also do a case study too. Hey, I lended, I made this much money. We're all about like learning here, right? So I would prefer to use real life examples of people that are, are leveraging the platform. All right, cool. So we got a lot of new people here. Awesome. Also, that's awesome. That's awesome. I love it. Um, hey, it, for those of you that are on the call right now, how many of you have funded a deal in Private Money Club as a borrower or as a lender? Type it in the chat. I'm curious. How many of you have funded a deal in Private Money Club or, you know, worked out, right? Type it in the chat if that's you. I'm curious to see who we got in here. <clears throat> All right, we're still doing the borrowers, borrowers, lenders. Not yet. Okay, cool. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Not yet at PMC. Okay, cool. If you have funded a deal, yep, okay, I see you guys are saying, yeah, we did, but as a lender, yes, we did, as a borrower, right? Okay, cool. David and Dorothy, what's up? I know you guys have a bunch of times, right? All right, cool, so here we go. This is what we do every single time. Uh, we start on time. We start right at 1 o'clock. We keep it real estate on this call just because that's, you know, I'm only going to talk about things that I do um, and that I know about, right? So we're gonna, I'm a real estate investor. We're going to keep it real estate. I know in Private Money Club, there's all, sometimes different types of, uh, lending opportunities and things like that. Um, we're keeping it real estate in here today. Uh, participation is encouraged, right? This is encouraged. You guys are doing a great job of that. Participate in the chat box. Any questions that you have, all you got to do if you have a question is um, type it in the Q&A section down at the bottom. All right, Q&A section down at the bottom. Because so lots of times the chat gets rolling and I can't see the questions or I miss it and I, and I, I don't go back at the end and read all the, there's just so many, right? So if you have a question, drop it in the Q&A. I like to think I got my PMC team members here in the chat. Do I have anybody from PMC here from the Private Money Club in the chat helping me out, dropping links? I don't, I didn't see any familiar names, so I might be riding solo for this flight here. So let's see. Oh, I know I, know I got lots of members here, you guys, of course, of course. Um, I know you guys. All right, I know you guys are in Private Money Club. 
I'm talking about like is is uh, someone like that works at Private Money Club in the chat to help me out. All right. So uh, thank you. Thank you for that. I know you guys got my back in. And if I need a link or something, Dave and Dorothy, I'll let you know and you guys can post it in there. Thank you for, for helping me out and staying on top of things. All experience levels are welcome on these calls. So whether you're brand new uh, or if, you, if you've done 100 deals, it doesn't make a difference to us. Like we welcome everybody to this call. I think there's value in networking with this group every single uh, Thursday. So welcome to everybody here. All right. If you're tuning in for the first time, just real quick, who you're learning, who are you learning from? And by the way, this is a slide. Everything that I do, I, I try to give context around. So like I teach a course with Private Money Club called the Accelerator Program. If you've taken the Accelerator Program with me, type it in the chat. I'm curious, I'd love to see your names pop up if you've taken that course with me. So in, in the Accelerator Program, one of the things that I like to teach is how to present deals and opportunities. And on Wednesday's call last night with that group, it's a small group, uh, with that group of uh, coaching students, we talked about this slide right here. And so when Alexis gets on her on her call on Money Club Mondays, or any of you that go to share, you know, just a little bit of, of, of insight and some things that I've learned, there's a real quick little formula that we like to use. It's number, or, or excuse me, fact plus a fact and what you've learned is, fact and a fact and what you've learned is. So anytime I'm introducing myself, especially to a new group, and you're like, who is this person that we're listening to? I try to throw up a fact, a fact, what I've learned is, right? To help establish credibility right out of the gate, right? So we actually talked about this slide in my coaching uh, class with the Accelerator program last night. So a little bit about me, uh, my name is Noah Harris, real estate experience. Uh, my, my company Revive Homes was established in 2013. My wife and I, uh, that's the company that we use for many of our flips, right? So if you see a case study and it's Revive Homes, that's us. Right, and we we operate out of Columbia, South Carolina. We invest where we live, and and what we've learned over the years, you guys, is the importance of uh, establishing a 100% track record with our lenders. Right, uh, my goal for every single one of you on this call right now is a 100% track record. You know, uh, I think the more you're on these calls, the more we work together, the the higher likelihood that that's going to happen because you're educating yourself, you're learning, figuring out how to do this the right way. But I would love nothing more to meet some of you at one of our future events like the Money Tank or, or an, uh, an experience with Private Money Club. Come up to me and say, hey, I've been on the Quick Start webinars. I've been on 17 times in a row. Awesome. How's your business? Here's what I want to know. What's your track record? No, I have a 100% track record lending my money out and getting it back. Beautiful. Love it. No, I have a 100% track record borrowing funds and paying back my lenders. Beautiful. Love it. Right? That's what it's all about. Private Money Club itself, I know I have a few people on here that are new, especially um, some local folks here in, in my area. My wife went and um, I'm going to give a shout out to the True North Real Estate Investor Association down here in Chapin, South Carolina. My wife and I went and, uh, or Christy went and spoke at the, the Chapin, South Carolina Real Estate Investor Club last night on, you know, teaching how to market for deals and do some things like that. So we have a lot of folks from that group on this call right now. So some of you might be thinking, you know, what is Private Money Club and, and why, 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 is, uh, why is there so many people on this call right now? So here, here's how I look at it. And then we're going to get into the fundamentals and we're going to practice and we're going we're gonna to learn some stuff. Okay, so here's, what I, here's how I look at Private Money Club. You guys see there's a bunch of people in here already. Ten years ago when I first started using private funds and, and, and for the longest time, I had to, to go like basically you know, uphill battle trying to find private money lenders for the longest time I, I put so much effort into my elevator pitch right and i would go to real estate investor clubs i would um have a million conversations a day trying to talk to people about becoming my private money lender so i would give them the elevator right hey how would you like to make double digit rate of return secured by real estate that's worth much more does that is that entice you does that intrigue you you want to learn more about that process right and, and i got really good at the elevator over and over and over and over again but it took a long time to build relationships, meaningful relationships. I'm grateful for the ones that I did, but you know, there's a lot of conversations. Within Private Money Club, guess what? Everyone knows what private money lending is. Everyone has a grasp at it. So there's no elevator pitch. Like I don't, when I have a deal, I can just post it on Private Money Club or I can post in the forum what the opportunity is. I don't have to 
say, hey, guys, have you ever heard of private money lending? Did you know that you can make a double digit rate of return secured by real estate that's worth much more? I don't have to talk about that. I can just post the deal and let the people let the, everyone do their due diligence. Right. So picture like a fishing pond and the pond is fully stocked. And it's fully stocked with people that have great opportunities for people to make double digit rate of returns on their money secured by real estate. And it's stocked with a bunch of people who are on the other side of that coin, right? So one of the things on this call here, I, I tried my best to teach from a borrower's perspective and from the lender's perspective. And as a borrower's perspective, if I threw a line in that pond with a deal that had equity, that had a great rate of return, and I could show, show everyone in that, in that water there, in that pond, right? That uh, I was credible, I had experience, I had a good deal, I surrounded myself with a good team, right? And I, was, I would be a safe play. The deal is going to get funded. I'm 100% confident in that. Anytime I post a deal in, in this pond, it seems like I get seven or eight people, you know, trying to, uh, trying to start the conversation to fund the deals, right? And now, what a great problem to have. So if you're a borrower on this call, imagine, imagine if we have a deal, we post it, and now we have eight different people that are like, hey, raising their hand. I'm interested in this. Now what happens? You get to pick and choose. You get to you get to have your choice, right? You don't have to pay the fifteen percent interest. You can say, "Hey, look, I really want to work with you, but this guy over here, you know, he he's doing fourteen, he's doing thirteen, he's do, she's doing twelve, right? Can you do ten, right?" And on the same and the same goes on the other side too, right? For the lender. So this is relationship based, guys. Yes, the asset is critical. The assets are super important. When we're lending money or borrowing money, we got to make sure we're doing this the right way and we're finding good deals. But it all starts with the relationships that we're having, right? So on this call here, here's what we cover, and here's what we try to crush. We try to the the fears of do I have the credibility? Is someone going to take me seriously? Um, you know, do I really understand how this works? Like, you know, I don't know what other documents. Like, how do what are the what does the paperwork process look like? These are things that I used to run into all the time. I still do. I still do. We went if we went to a real estate meeting you know, um, here in Columbia, and, and I talk, I talk to people all the time that are flipping houses, do, you know, investing in real estate, and they're using hard money lenders. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's a time and place for that, right? They're, they're, they're great to work with. They got deep pockets. Their whole objective is to put your money, put their money to work in deals, right? But at the same time, they could probably save a little bit of money. They could probably save a little bit of uh, in, in fees, right? And interest that they're paying and so on and so, and so on and so forth, right? So there's, but when I ask folks, hey, why haven't, you know, you have great experience. Why haven't you used private money lending yet? It usually comes down to guys, believe it or not, they're like, man, I've never gone and talked to a person before. I don't know if anyone's going to take me seriously. I don't even know where to start, right? So for lots of people, uh, we've had conversations with banks trying to borrow funds for real estate, for cars, for businesses, but how many times have you had a conversation with a person asking for half a million dollars, right? So there's there's some there's definitely some some um, like self doubt out there. So hopefully on this call we, we we try to scratch we we try to eliminate that right and and just know and today what we're going to be talking about is really building on that credibility. So stick with me as we get into stuff here. You're going to see how I establish credibility real quick, and and not only do it fast but do it right. Right. I'm, 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 a, I'm not just going to teach you what to say. I'm going to tell you what to do. Right. I'm going to give you some action steps to go out there and start putting people in place to help leverage um, other people's credibility, too. Right. <clears throat> I, I truly believe that if we have the cred, the clarity, uh, the confidence comes, you know, and you're in a community here where people understand what the objective is and, and what's going on. Right. So cool. What's up, Tanya? Good to see you uh, to join Private Money Club. I think it's like fifteen hundred bucks. Uh, a year, something along those lines. If you go, I'll put the website in here. I'm only, at, I'm only private money. Someone asked in the chat, moneyclub.com. You can go and check it out. All right. And they'll give you a demo and all of that stuff here. A couple questions. Let's see if, if there's any questions. Anytime there's a question too, if it's a question that you submit on these calls and it's a question that the whole call could benefit from, I'll, I'll answer it. If it's something that's very deal specific, I might wait till the end to answer it. Right, so um, just bear with me here with the questions. What is required to become a lender? Well, we got to make. I want. I don't want to say what's required, but here's you got to know what you're doing. First things first, 
right? You got to know what your education above all else, right? I don't think there's a, a, a dollar amount or anything like that with the type of lending that we're talking about, right? Where you're taking a debt position and securing it with a mortgage, right? Um, Bree, what's up, Bree? Good to see you. Welcome. Uh, we love having people here that are brand new. I have a 110 multifamily commercial property in San Francisco. Uh, and it's looking for people who are interested. The lead is enticing to other properties they own and management. So I would, if you have a deal that you would want to talk about uh, in front of a large audience, then I would say, hey, email me and I can get you in touch with Stephen Nagy and you can share it on Money Club Mondays if you're a premier member with Private Money Club. Uh, how do we cover ourselves legally with private lending? That's a great question, Jody. So we're going to talk about that. And uh, are you on the borrower side or the lender side? So part of the fundamentals and things that we practice every single week help keep us safe, right? Nothing's perfect, but um, these, are, these are what we call fundamentals, right? And this is what we do every single week. Your real estate business lives and dies by the network and the connections that you make. I mean, after all, your network, well, it's your net worth. That's what you always heard, right? If that's an area where you desire improvement, well, Private Money Club, it's for you. PMC saves you precious time and money by bringing the real estate world, well, right to you, right in the palm of your hand. So get in on the action like so many others have by going to privatemoneyclub.com and sign up. Now, um, at the end, I'm gonna encourage you to make a move, right? Do something. So with this webinar here, the reason why we have so many people on this call how many of you have been on this call before? Like you, this is, and if you know how many times you've been on, put the number in the chat box, or if you had to guess, right? This is we've done this 17 weeks in a row. How many of you have been on one of these before? Let me know, okay? So the reason why we have so many repeat people is because I encourage you to do something, make a move, right? So at the end, I'll put this slide up, and then you can figure out what you want to do. And it's not just watch Noah while you eat your lunch and talk and watch him talk about private money lending. Like the goal here is to to take what we're teaching and build momentum with it. All right. So I'm going to encourage you to practice what we talk about today. Practice your fundamentals. Uh, you can take control of your money. Maybe you need some help and you're like, hey, I got to figure out what's right for me. Then I would encourage you to schedule a call with the private money club team. And um, you can go to privatemoneyclub.com to do so. It's if anything, at a minimum, I would just encourage you to set a reminder. All you got to do is go, hey, Surrey, can you schedule next Thursday's call 1 p.m. Eastern time? And it's that simple. Schedule for 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. next Thursday. So Surrey already knows, right? So so it's that simple. Just hop on the next one so you can build momentum. And at least with Private Money Club, create a Private Money Club profile. There's two ways to do this. There's a free option, the Premier. I think the Premier is like 1500 bucks. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Could be more. Could be less. But there's also a free option. So if you create the free, you can go in. You can poke around. But if you want to really have you know messaging capabilities and share deals uh, on Money Club Mondays and things like that, then you know go Premier, leapfrog, and just do it. All right. I also teach a class called the Accelerator Program. It's a four-week course followed by four weeks of coaching and support. And we're starting another one of those in July. And you can go to privatemoneyclub.com to learn about all these different things. But pick one. Pick one. Right? Keep the momentum going. All right, cool. Here we go. Fundamentals. Fundamentals. Uh, Patty has a good question. How can I make money if I'm a complete newbie in all of this? Where should I start? Patty, you're in the right place. Just start learning. Just start learning. Right? I wouldn't make any moves right away. Anytime you're in, you're putting money to work into something, learn as much as you possibly can about that topic before you do, right? You can make money in so many different things. I mean, but whatever you're interested in, whatever you want to read about, whatever you want to study, whatever you want to watch on YouTube, whatever you want to dive into, I would put my money there. So if you like the idea of putting your money to work and having it secured by real estate that's worth more, learn about it. Learn as much as you can, educate yourself. I would start there, you're in the right place. And then hop in Private Money Club, join the, create a free profile or go premium or premier or whatever they call it and, and start networking with people, right? But just stay plugged in, stay around the campfire. I think you'll be, you'll be fine, all right? Cool, all right, private money loan, here we go. Fundamentals, what is it? What is a private money loan? Well, instead of going to a bank, we're going to a person. It's relationship based. All right. That when I say private money loan, this is what I'm talking about, right? This is a loan that is secured by real estate. 
Hope's got it down like a bank, right? Just like a bank. And what does that mean, just like a bank? Well, you know, we talk about this every week. And the reason why I'm talking about it every week is because I hope that you are becoming better and better and better at explaining it to people. My, my, what I want for, for people on this call is you're getting better and better and better at being able to have conversations around what this is. How many of you, those of you that have been on this call a bunch, you know, are you starting to, is your confidence starting to grow a little bit? Just give me a little bit of feedback here. I mean, do, do you like that we repeat some of these slides? Okay, cool. Hope says, yeah. So what is it? It's a loan secured by real estate, just like a bank. So if I was a borrower and I didn't have private money club, and I, but I knew that there was someone who would make a great lender, right? How many, who, who in this group right now in this chat knows someone that would make a great private money lender, but that person doesn't know it yet, right? Do you have a friend, a neighbor, a family member that would uh, associate that would make a great private money lender, but they don't even, maybe they don't even know what private money lending is yet. Is that anybody? All right. So this is how I would approach that, approach these conversations and start, you know, uh, expanding that person's mind to, to, to potentially being your lender. So as you, obviously, if you're a real estate investor, you're getting into real estate, right? You, you're, you're maybe, maybe you're flipping some houses, maybe you're buying some rental properties, things like that. So people are going to be genuinely curious about your real estate business and what you got going on, right? So as I'm having these conversations, I would start talking to people and I would say, hey, <clears throat> you know, when I fund my deals, I use private uh, private funds, like, you know, relationship based, like people, everyday people like you and me. I'd be like, what are you talking about? How does this work? So just like a bank, right? When, when you went and bought your first property, your first house or the house you live in now, right? The house you live in now, did you get a mortgage? They're going to say probably yes, right? But, All right, great. So you, there was a stack of papers this thick that you signed. Probably took you an hour to go through them, right? And they're going to laugh and say, yeah. So you, you, you signed a mortgage, right? You got a mortgage. Yep. I got approved for this much. And, you know, I, I got a mortgage. All right, cool. And then you also signed a promissory note. You signed basically a, a contract that outlined the terms of the loan, the interest rates you're paying and things like that, right? Yep. All right, cool. And then you're personally guaranteeing, potentially, are you personally guaranteeing, right? Uh, uh, insurance, you know, before you went and closed on your property, did you call your state farm agent and notify them that you're buying the house and you want to list the bank as the lost payee and, or the mortgagee and do all of these things? And they're going to say, yeah, just, we did all of those things. Like, Fantastic. So it's the same thing. So instead of me going to Wells Fargo or going to a bank, I'm actually going to a person and I'm providing a, you, I'm going to use you as an example. I'm, I'm going to give you a mortgage. I'm going to have a, a promissory note, that, you know, including a personal guarantee. And I'm going to go and I'm going to list you on the insurance, just like a bank would want. But here's what's cool. I'm going to pay you 10%. percent they will be like, 10%, that's crazy or whatever, right? So you're, you're sharing that it's just like a bank. Now on the flip side, if I was on this call and I was a lender and I didn't have private money club, but I wanted to put my money to work in real estate in the form of a mortgage and, uh, or, you know, a, a private money loan, here's what I would do. I would find other real estate investors in my area, right? So if I'm in Chapin, South Carolina, I'd go to the True North Real Estate Investor Association with the Howards. And I would go in there and I'd say, hey, Jordan, Tell me real quick, who's crushing it in this business right here? Who's like, who's really good, has a good reputation, good character, and, and they've got experience that's looking for money. And Jordan's going to say, me. No, he's going to say, he might say, well, I don't know, this person, that person, or whatever, right? Awesome. So I'm going to go find that person, and I'm going to say, hey, um, uh, let me ask you a question. Like, Jordan's told me that you're like a really good real estate investor. Um, how are you funding your deals right now? And I would guess to say they're either going to say cash my own money or they're going to say hard money and you're going to say hard money if they say hard money oh hard money that's interesting do you mind like if i ask you like what the interest rates are that you're paying and they might say yeah i pay anywhere from 12 to 13 percent plus three points da, 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 da. right and then i'm going to go well let me ask you a question what if instead of going to a hard money lender we did private money loans like i'm a private lender so i have funds I want to put to work. And how about instead of you paying 13% and three points, you could do 13% and one point. Would that be worth having a conversation? Yep, right? 
so, so but at the end of the day if no one's used a person before they might still have some cloudiness around how it all works and you can say hey look just like a bank just like a hard money lender mortgage prom note listed on the insurance all of these things personal guaranteeing the loan things like that right just like a bank so those this this slide applies to both sides of the coin here guys like let's just get great at practicing the conversations practicing explaining what private money lending is and see how many conversations you can have that's a good i'm gonna do a contest next thursday i want you guys to see how many conversations try to have as many conversations as you can have and uh whoever has the most conversations is gonna is gonna win a prize we'll figure out what it is we'll figure out what the prize is but like let's practice having these conversations with people all right let me know how it goes all right so lots of times when we talk about the fundamentals of the of just like a bank and opening their eyes you know the money talks right so people are like all right yeah whatever show me the money right so you got to figure out we got to figure out let's go borrowers first if i'm a borrower i got to figure out okay what's my interest rates that, that i'm willing to pay right what's your business model what's what's your niche <clears throat> excuse me what's your niche so if i'm talking to someone yeah you know we use private funding relationship based everyday people just like you and me want to put their money to work right they don't want it sitting in the savings account earning nothing for them they love the idea of, of maybe making double digit annualized rate of return on their money and then so they're all naturally going to ask uh well, well what kind of interest rate are we talking about here have it figured out in advance give them an answer right now i like to give a range because I, 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 some deals I might be able to only do 8%. Some deals I can go as high as 12%. That's me. You got to figure out what your uh, setup's going to be, right? What are you willing to pay to borrow funds, right? So for us, I say, hey, we pay anywhere from 8 to 12% annualized interest for fix and flip type deals. Each loan opportunity is unique. Each loan's different. So I don't know, right? But he, naturally, what's going to happen is there's this like optimism this like bias optimism effect that's going to go into play. So immediately a person's mind is going to be like, all right, 12%. That sounds awesome. Right? So now I promise you, if you're having these conversations, if you're having the conversation at the true North Rio in Chapin, South Carolina, I'm telling you right now, whoever you told that to is driving home. And the whole time, all they're thinking about is 12%. I could really make 12%, 12%. They're going to miss their turn. They're going to be so focused on this. Right? So have it figured out on the lender side, if you're the lender and you're having these conversations, figure out what you're going to charge, right? Maybe your scale is a little bit different. Hey, we charge anywhere from 10 to, to 14%. Just depends on the deal. Each loan opportunity is unique, right? Figure out what you want to do, but be ready to spit it out, right? Be ready to have those conversations, right? Which is cool. So, all right, here we go. Here we go. Uh, don't sleep. This net network is brilliant. I love it. I love it. All right, cool. And then, hey, here's William. William in the chat, making it work. All right, cool. Any new questions? Any new questions? How do we cover ourselves? All right, so this, so Jody, this is going to help help start this, okay? And I'm not providing any legal advice here because your question is how how do we cover ourselves legally? But um, this is what I do, uh, Jody. So if I was borrowing money, at a minimum, I would I would provide my lenders with this. If I was lending money, at a minimum, I would want this. All right, and then. There's some other things here as well, but this is to get the conversation going, right? This is to get the conversation. Uh, Casey asked a good question. What percentage of posted deals actually get funded? It's tough to track. I don't know the answer to that question. And I know personally, I've done a very bad job of when I post a deal, actually going in, selecting that the deal got funded through Private Money Club. There is an option to show like, did the deal get funded? I've done a horrible job of that as well. So if I've done a bad job, I imagine other people have too. Um, however, from my experience, it's been awesome, right? And if, if anyone else is in here and in the chat, if you've posted deals in Private Money Club and they've got gotten funded, uh, let Casey know, say, yeah, I did, it was awesome, right? Let us know too. Here's some of the things that we like to make sure that we provide our, our borrower or lenders as borrowers. Number one, the promissory note, and by the way, who's going to be writing all this stuff? Who's going to be drafting a, you know, a promissory note and a mortgage and the personal guarantee? Who's, who's going to be writing all of this stuff up for us? Are we going to go online and, and uh, just, you know, on, on, a, on an internet forum and download something that someone that we have no idea who they are said that it would be good for us to use? 
No way. Right? The lawyer, the attorney. Oh my gosh, you guys are so smart. Okay, so I see like 18 attorney answers there. That's correct, right? So everything that we're talking about here is going to be drafted by one of your team members, your real estate attorney, right? So promissory note, mortgage or deed of trust, right? Uh, personal guarantee, and then uh, the insurance. So there's more to it than this. Like for instance, you can go above and beyond something I would want is a lender's title policy, things like that. But for conversation purposes, this is where we start, right? So to get to create intrigue, to create the um, the idea, the desire to learn more about working with us and to build upon that relationship. The whole point of like elevator pitches and it is to set up a meeting, is to set up a phone call where we can actually get to know each other and, and start building a relationship and figuring out how to help one another, right? So when I'm having these conversations, again, I'm going quick, right? So if I went back, hey, we pay anywhere from eight to 12% annualized interest secured by real estate, right? Each loan opportunity is unique. You, you mentioned it was secured by real estate. What do you mean by that? Well, just like a bank, we provide you with a promissory note, mortgage or deed of trust, personal guarantee, uh, and we list you on the insurance, right? So if I were to give any advice, and, and if, if I were to practice any of the fundamentals, right? Because that's one of your assignments, right? If we're calling it that, it would be to practice this, right? If you're a lender, here's your lending, here's your lending criteria, right? If you're, if you have a profile in private money club, the profile, you may want to say, Hey, I'm a real, I'm a lender. Um, you know, it's easy to work with me. I can make quick decisions. I can close quickly. I, I'll, I'll fund fix and flip deals or rental properties or whatever that person wants to do. Um, all I require is a promissory note, mortgage, uh, personal guarantee, and to be listed on the insurance. Easy breezy, right? Uh, and, and I think that what, you, what you'll find is that having these documents, I forgot who asked this question, not only does this like from a legal standpoint, like help secure our money against, uh, against the property because all the, you know, these things are going to get recorded. But it also, when you're a lender and you say, hey, these, this is what I require, it's also going to keep borrowers um, or people that like don't want to provide those things, they're not going to message you, right? So we only want to work with people that do this. And it, so, so, why, so it helps, keep, helps, helps, helps you find those folks, right? It helps attract the right uh, folks like a magnet. So put this in your profile. As a borrower, I would put this in your profile too. Hey, this is what I do. I provide these things, right? And, and so as people like are flipping through and reading different profiles, they'll feel, they'll feel better about uh, working with, with that person, all right? So yeah, all documents are prepared and recorded by licensed professionals uh, every single time. Like this isn't, um, you know, this isn't something that we, we, we skip, right? Do we need to have our own attorney or... So I think JD was a borrower, right? JD, were you? And uh, I think you said you wanted you were the real estate investor in this scenario. Yes. So that's a great question, and we're going to talk about that today. So hang in there, JD. I'm going to answer that question in great detail here in a, in a couple of minutes. Okay. All right. Cool. So the whole goal, right? Why are we practice these slides to set up the meetings to build relationships, right? We're going to get great at repeating those over and over and over again. Okay. So here's what we're getting into. Oh, I thought I had a, oh, I had another slide here. Shoot. Okay, here's what we're getting into. Okay. Credibility step number one. So this, this is a slide taken from my accelerator class. And I thought that this would be a great lesson here. We've got 19 minutes to cover this. this would, I thought this would be a great lesson, <clears throat> especially for my, excuse me, for my accelerator students. Um, who are just wrapping up their, their four week program, because this is the very first thing that I taught uh, to them during that course. And I'm going to teach it here to you guys. And this is going to be a great reminder for my accelerator team uh, to to go and do this. Like if you haven't done this already, like Derek, I know that you're in that class. Hopefully you're filling that out. Let me know in the chat how this is going. Right. And how many people you have on your chat. But we talk about right when I teach when I teach accelerator, the first things we, we crush is credibility. And just to just to just to eliminate the fear of who's going to want to work with me. Well, step number one in that entire process is is to establish and surround yourself, insulate yourself with the best of the best with licensed business 
professionals. Okay, and I can't stress this enough. So when I'll give you an example of, of how you can use this and how I've I've leveraged this and and I think you'll really like it. Um, when, when I first got started using private funds, uh, this was a while ago, over ten years ago. Uh, I'm 41 now. I was 31 then. I probably looked like I was like 21. I just looked like a baby. I was a baby, right? Right out of, you know, trying to figure it out, right? And I just moved to a new area. I just moved to Columbia, South Carolina. And I just, I just felt like I had a hard time building credibility, building credibility with agents, with my contractors, and especially with private money lenders. And I needed private money because I was growing. I was using hard money, but the problem with my hard money lenders where I had to come up with 20% for every flip that I was doing and also keep a bunch in reserves. And if you're just getting started and you're doing price points of 200 or 300,000, and I got to come to the table with 20% of that. So like I had to take these 40, $50,000 chunks, set them aside or put them into deals. And, you know, I just wasn't scaling as fast as I wanted to. I wanted to, you know, take on 12 to 15 flips uh, that first year that I was, I was, in, in Columbia, South Carolina. So I had to, I had no choice. I had to go private, right? So w- one of the things that someone shared with me, they're like, look, you need to build your team. And so I'm going to share with you, you what they shared with me. And so, and it starts with your real estate attorney, JD. It starts with the attorney. It starts with who's going to be doing your closings and who is going to be drafting your paperwork. As a borrower, if you don't know this information and you're having conversations with people, I would just stop having the conversations and go and figure that out, right? So what I did is I found the best of the best. So if you're like, no, I don't even know where to start. As a real estate investor, you guys, if you buy a house, if you fix and flip a house or you buy a rental property that needs a little bit of work, you're going to need every single person on this list probably, right? Or at least 90% of them, aren't you? So if you're going to need these individuals, these types of professionals to do a real estate deal, why would you not go and figure out who is that person is going to be before you start the, the, before you go buy a property, before you go start having conversations with lenders to fund you money, right? So figure this out first. So I would recommend like now, you know, Google's great. Like, I mean, sometimes it's that simple, right? You're like, no, I don't even know where to start. Start with Google. So what I did is I looked for everybody that had great reviews. I also looked for people that were standouts within our community, names that everyone knew, uh, names that people trusted, things like this. Okay. So when I first started using private money, I found my attorney, number one. So I wanted to go out and find a real estate attorney that everyone knew, had a great reputation in the community was voted best of the best. You guys have like the best of the best in your area? Like if there's like the newspapers and you got to vote and it's best of the best and the plaques are on the wall, go find the person with the plaque on the wall. Okay, start there. I'm not saying you're going to be stuck with this person for the rest of your rest investing life, but start there. So I went out, I found the real estate attorney that actually drafted the uh, and wrote the contract for the state of North Carolina that, that the real estate agents use. And it was, and I wanted, I, I love that fact because now guess what i get to tell and brag to my lenders that my real estate attorney drafted the document that the real estate agents use you you follow me you catch that so i want i want to be able to brag about my team right we recently went and did a deal we were doing a deal in lake lure north carolina right now that's a different market I, I needed to go find a real estate attorney in Lake Lure. Where do we, where do we start? We started with Google. We started with referrals from our agents and things like that. And I found best of the best Western North Carolina. Right. And that's who we went with that person that was well known within the community. Why? Because when I'm talking to my lenders, I want to be able to brag about my team. Right. So a real estate attorney title company, depending on which state and, and how you close your deals in your state, real estate agent, I went out and I found the top 1% agent in the neighborhoods where I would be investing a top 1% agent in the neighborhoods where I I was investing. So every day I would drive down this road, St. Andrews Road, going from my house to downtown. And every day, the same woman's name was on the outside this real estate office as being the number one agent that week. So I was like, Oh, there's a good start. Sometimes it's that simple. Why did I pick her? Because I could tell my lender, 
the same thing I just told you. Every single week when I drive by, this person's name's on the sign as the best real estate agent in the area that we're going to be flipping houses. So we started there. We really liked her. We feel like she's going to do a great job helping us analyze deals and getting the property sold. Right? You follow me? Okay. Uh, contractors. Does your contractor, when, he, when your contractor shows up to a job site, do they have like the junky van and like the whole dashboard is covered in receipts and hamburger wrappers, right? Or, 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 or are they a professional looking contractor? Like do, do, they, do, they, do they mean business, right? Do they look like someone that's gonna show up on time? Your team, it says a lot about you, right? So as you start looking and Googling, hey, who's gonna do my work for me? Like I would start with Google, I would start with referrals, find people that come highly recommended, add them to your team, right? Insurance agent. So does your insurance agent specialize in investment properties? Do you have an insurance company that will fund a house with boarded up windows? If not, you got to figure that out. Like who, where am I going to go for this? Right? Cause remember you're going to be adding your lenders to the insurance. So all these little people are, are insulating you, helping you stay safe, right? Making sure that things are done the right way, right? You're only as good as your team. Okay. Home inspectors. So whenever, Whenever we um, buy a property, we always have a home inspector go out to the property. And I usually have a home inspector that's the absolute worst. And by worst, I mean best. And so I, we have a home inspector in our area that has a reputation for being a, de a deal killer because he always finds all the stuff that's wrong with the house, always says this could be this, this could be this, this could be wrong. Real estate agents hate him. I love him. I love him because he's going to find everything that could be or is wrong with that house. And why do I like that? Because I'm going to tell my lender, hey, we hire the best of the best. This guy never, his team never misses. They do a drone. They fly it around. They've got eight people that come out the property at the same time, get eight sets of eyes on the house, right? I want to be able to brag to my lender about my squad, all right? Uh, my accountant specializes. He works with a lot of real estate investors. Financial advisor, this is important. This is really, really, really important. So many times when you're talking about private money lending, uh, there's, going to be pe pe there's going to be people that are interested and they want to get involved, but their funds are in an old 401k or their funds are with their current employer in a 401k or they've got a, 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 an IRA, right? But maybe it's not, they don't know how to use it for real estate or to do something. They're going to be like, can I, you, can I, you take that money and do this? And, and their financial advisors and their HR company is not going to be like, oh yeah, for sure. Right. You need to hire, a, you need to find a professional that you can send people to, to help get those questions answered. Right. Someone that's qualified and specializes and licensed in something like a self-directed, retirement account and things of this nature, right? So Private Money Club works with a company called Horizon Trust a lot, right? I believe that's that's who they who they work with. So as you start having conversations, I don't I'm not qualified to answer the, those types. I don't know if you can take an old 401k, but this person does. This is what this company does. So maybe you should talk to them and now by having someone on, you know, that, that you have that you in your Rolodex in your cell phone that you can refer someone to 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 get the correct information maybe that person can help the person you're talking to get their funds in order so that they can become one of your lenders all right and 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 help them along the way so this is important if you're going to be doing rental properties what's the property management team look like right um i'm excited in the next couple of weeks i don't know if it's gonna be next week or the week after that but i'm actually gonna have uh, a bookkeeper on the quick start webinar to share with you a little book little bookkeeping nuggets for my lenders and for my borrowers so stay tuned for that one she's she's super sharp you guys are gonna like that first guest ever uh week episode 18 or 19 so we'll see week one or two you like that part okay cool yeah we're definitely gonna i'm glad i'll let her know um I'm waiting to hear back i'm hoping next week or the week after that we're gonna get the bookkeeper on to talk about some things for our lenders and borrowers right and more it, it the list i'm sure doesn't stop here right it, maybe if you're brand new you're partnering with people who are experienced right so the Maybe there's someone mentoring you and guiding you and coaching you too. That's important. Now, here's why this is, we're going to put it all together. Uh, JD says, I don't know what a bookkeeper is. Then you need one. <laughs> JD, you need one. 
right, so it's just someone that you know as you start flipping houses you don't you don't want to take all those receipts and shove them in a, in a shoebox and and hope for hope for the best right you want to have real nice organized books it's going to help you be able to uh, get more loans refinance properties makes tax time super easy right so you, you're going to want a bookkeeper on your team think account not an accountant but someone that makes the accountant's life super easy right uh, yeah takes care of, yeah there you go thank you blanca all right cool um all right where was i where was i i got sidetracked oh hey here's how here's we put it all together okay here's how we put all of this together all right here's how we put all this together if i was brand new and by, by the way even if you're experienced i would take the time to organize this information even if you're experienced because you could be the most experienced person in the world if you're talking to a lender that's never worked with you, they're going to, you know, it's one thing to say, I, hey, I've done a hundred deals. It's like, oh, okay, cool. Well, can, can you tell me a little bit about your team? Right. You still should be able to say, this is the attorney. This is the title company. This is my real estate agent. This is my, my, my crew of contractors I've worked with. You should still be able to rattle this stuff off. Right. And if you are a, a lender, I would be asking this question every single time. Tell me about your attorney. Tell me about your team. Who's on your team. See what they say. See how they answer it. Can they rattle off five or six roles, responsibilities, business professionals that they are in communication with about their deals? I hope so, right? I hope so. Um, but that's that's what we're aiming for. All right. So if you're brand now, if you're brand new to this, here's how you can use this because it's not a matter of if a person's going to ask you how many deals you've done, but a matter of when. Right. This should be one of the first things that you talk about. Right. I could teach you everything I know about elevator pitches, what to say, how to say it. But if someone asks you, hey, how many have you done? And you don't know what to say, like you're brand new and you don't want to seem like an idiot, but you also don't want to be a liar. Right. You always got to be yourself, be truthful, be, be straightforward and honest with people. Um, and you, don't, you also don't want to say, well, this is my first one and stop there. You don't want to say, like, this is my first one. And. You know, I logged on the quick start webinar with this guy named Noah and I, I feel pretty good about it. Like that's never going to work. Right. And you're, you're probably, you, that's not a good idea. Right. Get, we got to surround ourselves with a team. So, but if you did say, Hey, look, Mr. And Mrs. Lender, uh, I'm brand new to real estate. My, my past career, my current career, I'm doing this. Right. I think it's very important that you leverage your current and past experiences. Because I promise no matter what you do for a living, those same skill sets transition right over into real estate investing. They can, you know, so if I was talking to someone and they were a nurse, they'd say, hey, look, for the last 10 years, I've been a nurse. I've helped save people's lives. I've followed protocols, procedures. I've managed teams. I've worked in hospitals. I've, I've worked in six different states and I really enjoy helping people. But it's also now time to maybe start thinking about helping myself as well. Right. So what did you do there? You played off your current position, your current and past goals. Now you're focusing on real estate. And I, I would continue that conversation by saying, hey, real quick, you know, or not real quick. I was follow that up by saying, hey, before I went and started making offers and talking to lenders and, and acquiring real estate or whatever phase you're in, I went out and I set up my team. So while I might be brand new to real estate, my real estate attorney has been doing this 20 years. My real estate agent is a top 1% agent in the neighborhoods where I'm buying houses. My contractor has 4.5 stars on Google. They've been in business 25 years. My insurance company that I work with specializes in working with real estate investors. My home inspector is well known in our community for finding everything wrong with the properties. My accountant specializes in uh, real estate, just like the type of real estate that I'm buying. And if you want to help uh, figuring out how to take an old 401k or retirement account and turn it into a self-directed account, I've got someone that I can refer you to that helps people do that for a living. They're licensed in that area. I've got the property management team. I've got my bookkeeper keeping me uh, organized, right? And I got someone helping me and coaching me and mentoring me, right? So while I might be brand new, my team has over 100 years worth of real estate experience. And, you know, that might not seal the deal, but they will say, hey, you know what? You've done your homework. And I like that. Let's keep the conversation going. Show me, show me the opportunity. What do you got? And that's what it's all about. So, all right, cool. This is this was a good class. Do you guys like this stuff? Are you glad that we revisited this? So if you're on the call right now and you're in my accelerator course, like go back. This is the first thing that we talked. It's a good refresher. I know a few of you emailed me that are in that class, like the attorney and the agent and the contractor, but like how far have you gone after that? Right. So maybe go back, revisit, 
and, and maybe even have a number two. Like maybe you got one contractor, but then you got a backup, right? So it's pretty good stuff. So, um, all right, yes, yes, yes. What are good interview questions for building your team? I love that. That's a great question, Wyatt. That's a great question. So let's just take the attorney as an example. So, and this is this is important because how I do how I do my business is if there's a lender in a different state, like let's say I post a deal and someone from Private Money Club that lives in Texas wants to fund that deal. I would say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Lender, um, we have a team in Columbia, like we're currently scheduled to close on this property with such and such attorney, right? So in our area, we use Bell Carrington. So I might say Andrew Montgomery with Bell Carrington, Price and Greg, down on 339 Hayward is uh, where the office is. They're right now uh, scheduled to do our closing. So we've ordered title work, the whole deal, right? And they're, they're making sure there's no liens, encumbrances, and all of this on the property. If you would like for them to draft the promissory note, mortgage, pay, get all the paperwork set up for you, I can introduce you to them, right? And I would just do a warm handoff. And now I, now the lender doesn't have to worry about, okay, I got to figure out who's going to write this up for me. I live in Texas, but the deal's in South Carolina. I need to find someone in South Carolina. I'm going to introduce them, right? I'm going to introduce them to that person. So when I'm, so going back to Wyatt's question, what are some good questions? Well, with the real estate attorney, I would say, hey, look, what's really important. If um, I, I'm a real estate investor, I use a lot of private individuals to fund my deals. Can, can someone in your office, are you guys comfortable, familiar with doing private money loans, private money mortgages, promissory notes, and things like that? If, I need, if one of my lenders needs a mortgage drafted, is that cool with you? Can you guys do that? And they should say, absolutely, right? That's what real estate attorneys do all day, every day. So, um, but you want to, why, what you want to look for is the customer service experience that you're getting because it's probably going to be passed on to your lender and that's a reflection of you. So what I like about the company that I work with is they're always on it. They always answer the phone. They always call you back quickly. They're very organized and they're very polite on the phone and they're thoughtful and they don't forget stuff. So those are all key elements that I want for my lender. So if, if my lender is talking to this, this company, that's a reflection on me because I referred them to this company to use. Right. So I want to make sure that the customer service is top notch. Right. So that would be a good example of, of questions that I would ask with a title company or with a real estate attorney, because that's who your lenders probably going to be speaking with. Right. The lenders probably not going to call the home inspector or the contractors, but they are going to be in communication with the real estate attorney. So. All right. Cool. Um, I've learned a lot. Bookkeeper, I thought, was the same as a tax professional. My bad for understanding. And yeah, man. But yeah, we're learning. We're learning. I love it. Uh, random question. Can you use PML for buying property at auction? Yeah, for sure. For sure you can. You just got to figure out, you know, you just got to communicate with the lender. There's there's probably a little bit more, um, you know, timelines and things like this. But yeah, you can use, we've used private money lending um, to purchase properties. Can we watch the replays? Uh, Jody's a nurse. All right. Yeah, for sure. Um, it, if you Google um, quick start webinar, private money club, uh, you should be, it should pop up on YouTube for you to be able to, uh, to find and do Jody, if you want to go back and watch some. Um, and if you want, you can take the accelerator class, you guys. So we have a new class coming up. Here's my make a move slide, right? I love it. You guys are already thinking, oh gosh, I want more of this. Where, what can I do? So here's what I would do. There's just a, a few options here between now and next Thursday, practice the fundamentals. Okay, take control, take control of your money. If you're like, what's a blueprint? If you go to private money club, I'm going to put the website in here, dot com and click on the link, you can schedule a demo call uh, with private money with a team member from private money club and they can talk about all the things that they do and, and how it works. And if you want to kind of get a sneak peek or whatever, just contact them on the, on the website. It's the best way to do it. Um, attend next Thursday's call. Let's keep the ball rolling. If you don't have a PMC profile yet, definitely create one. Okay, there's a free option or you can just go ahead and buy the premium right either one so you can go there and check it out create your profile. Um, but put your picture like if you create a PMC profile and there's no photo of you. Um, and the, like the description super vague like it looks like you look like a virus like there's nobody clicking on that on that profile Okay, so like put some thought into it if you are going to do it at least get your picture up there alright 
And then um, the next accelerator course starts in July. If you're interested in that, you can go to privatemoneyclub.com and check it out. Um, there is a tuition involved in that. And uh, Derek's in there as well. Yeah, create the profile. Create it. Check it out. And do you guys. All right, so it's 2.02, guys. I'm going to sign off because lots of times Chris Noggle has a, a webinar lined up to start at 2. And he's probably in there looking at his watch, looking to see if we're still talking. And I don't want to just get kicked out and us not be able to say goodbye. So with that being said, this was an awesome class. I hope you guys have an amazing weekend. And I will see you next Thursday. All right, take care, everybody.